Today, I'm planning to present the acute kidney injury with all of you. I choose this topic because it is really important for in our daily clinical practice, as well as the mortality and morbidity of the patient. That's why I choose uh, this topic. So why acute kidney injury is important? Because most of the hospitalized patient will complicate it with the acute kidney injury, especially in the patient in ICU. Most of the patient uh, end up with the acute renal failure. And as I mentioned before, it is it has very high morbidity and mortality as well. Even and complicated AKI has 10% mortality rate. Furthermore, it becomes the, you know, complicated with the CKD, uh, even the discharge from the hospital in the recovery of the AKI. So we should see acute kidney injury as a spectrum of injury, which can progress to the multi-organ failure. So it is really important. We can differentiate the acute kidney injury to the hospital acquired and the community acquired. So community acquired, they are mainly because of the pre-renal causes like dehydration, hypovolemia, sometimes maybe because of the obstruction. Uh, but for the hospitalized patient, I mentioned you before, they are most of the ICU patient complicated with the acute kidney injury. So for our clinician, we should make sure we have that early awareness of the acute kidney injuries, do the appropriate intervention. It will prevent from the patient mortality and morbidity. So this is what I'm planning to talk in next few minutes. So how can we define the acute kidney injury? So we can <clears throat> define the acute kidney injury depends on the kidney function, including creatinine and urine output within 48 hours or seven days. But you need to know what is the baseline creatinine level, what is the baseline patient renal function first. So if it is increasing more than 26.5 micromole per liter within two days, or it increased 1.5 to 1.9 tenths, uh, then their baseline within less seven days, so we can defined as the acute kidney injury. From the urine output criteria, if it is less than 0 0.5 mil per kg per hour for less six hour or less, less than 300 mil in next 12 hour, in the 12 hour times, then we can define the acute kidney injury. However, you need to be aware about the, how is the patient body weight as well for the urine output criteria. So, we have the staging of the uh, kid, acute kidney injury, depends on the category staging here, one, two, three. So three, the AKI stage one is very, very common and it is easily, uh, it is really uh, easily reversible if you can monitor the kidney function at the time. However, if you miss the stage one, and then it can end up with the AKI stage three your patient would probably end up with the dialysis. So as I mentioned, you can differentiate depends on the serum creatinine level or urine output. So for the stage three, if it is more than your patient baseline creatinine more than three times, or you have to start immediately dialysis and you can define as a stage three uh, or patients and urine for more than 12 hours. So you need to aware about stage one then do the appropriate intervention. It is really, really important. So as I mentioned, urine output is different from, but uh, adequate urine output is different from people, different people to different people. So here, the elderly lady, 60 kg, so 0 0.5 mil per kg per hour will be about 30 mils. Young patient, 160 kg, it will be about 160, uh, eight, eight mils per hour. So it will be different adequate on human upper adequate or not is different from people to people. Then this is the first question. 
So we uh, uh, try to answer, just want to know how do you remember the AK stage one? So 76 years old male who has a community acquired pneumonia. So his blood pressure is borderline, he's a bit tachycardic and then slight temperature. He doesn't have any blood result yet, but he has the BBH history and the androgen get it done inside too. How can we define the AKI stage one? You can answer in the chat. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, this is C is C is the right answer. Yeah, very good. And another question: Which of the following types of AKI is common in A and E? Yeah, very good. So. It is common, uh, pre renal is really common in the a &E. They present with the mostly the uh, hypovolemia and also the same, uh, same kind of inversion affecting the kidney, you know. So pre renal AK is really, really common in the presenting to the emergency department. Okay, then we can differentiate the uh, acute kidney injury to three categories, pre-renal, intrinsic cause, and the post-renal. Pre-renal, your nephron, your kidney is structurally fine. However, because of the volume depletion, hypotension, it compromised the renal blood flow, then damage to the kidney. For intrinsic renal cause, it can be disease of the kidney itself or a lot of the insert to the kidney, like ischemic nephropathy, ischemia, cytotoxins, or an inflammatory, insult to the kidney, it became damaged to the every part, most of the part of the kidney, tubules, glomerulus, and then it became structural and fashion changes. Then post renal, just obstruction. So it can be obstruction from any causes, maybe stone, maybe tumor, or maybe BBH, or retroperitoneal fibrosis. Oh, so these kinds of things. So we, so while we know the categories of the uh, kidney injury, we have some idea when we ask the patient the history and then we can do the proper physical examination and on what we have to consider, what investigation we have to do. Okay, so this is, I just summarized the causes of the acute kidney injury. Uh, you, didn't know, you don't need to memorize everything, but just make sure that you have the same idea about what are the causes. For pre-renal, it can be uh, sepsis, or it can be true hypovolemia like diarrhea, vomiting, or you give a uh, uh, patient is on a lot of the uh, diuresis, or it can be recent uh, surgery causing blood loss, or reduce the affected circulation volume like cardiac failure, hepatorenal syndrome, cirrhosis, and mm -hmm. another thing is hypotension from the medication. So always, always review the medication list of the patient, you know. Otherwise, um, because most of the, uh, they give a lot of the high blood pressure medication, they give a lot of the uh, diuretics and it can uh, affect to the kidney function. For the intrinsic renal cause, it is mainly for the, uh, mainly the renal, renal people need to manage. Uh, it can be glomerulonephritis or it can uh, be there due to the tubular interstitial injury and immune complex uh, diseases like vasculitis and uh, myeloma, and also the because of the nephrotoxic medication, it can damage to the uh, kidney, like NSAID, gentamicin, and rhabdomyolysis. Sometimes, if you doesn't catch up the pre-renal and then correct properly, then it becomes intrinsic renal cause. So this is another question. Here's 62 years old gentleman who have the diabetes nephropathy, RLD on the dialysis for nine months. 
Now he received a kidney transplant from his wife. So immunosuppressive therapy include Bacillizima, Pratt, and the Tacrolimus. So the operation's ancestor, uh, uneventful. In the first 24 hour urine output is really good, about 3.5 liters of urine. After 36 hours, urine output is falling down slowly and it's become only 30 mils in the last hour. Then you have to think about what is on, what is what is the problem with this patient? Just operation within two days. So you have to think up, so you have to think about the causes first, then you have to think about what we should investigate after examining the patient. Can you uh, tell me what will be the causes? Any, any possible causes for reducing urine output? Yeah, rejection. Any others? Yeah, correct. Force of retention, yeah. Okay, so these are the dehydration, correct. So you have, to, uh, so we have to do the same investigation. Uh, then see her. So for the physical examination, he has no peripheral dimmer, blood pressure is fine, no tachycardia, and you see the blood investigation, the potassium levels, okay, 5.1. So for the renal, make sure that you see the potassium. And also the, you see other uh, hemoglobin is fine, platelet's normal, and also your creatinine, 330. So he is dialysis patient. You didn't you don't expect the creatinine to coming down immediately? It will uh, come down slowly after if the transplant is successful. Okay, then after that you have to consider. Someone uh, mentioned that it can be the uh, retention. Yeah, so we have to do the ultrasound to make sure the transplant kidney is okay. Is there any uh blood clots uh, occlusion in the kidney? So we do the ultrasound scan and the Doppler scan. Everything's look normal. So, so in this scenario. Someone mentioned that dehydration. This is the most probable, uh, probable causes because patient just falls off. We have to give the she he cannot eat and drink well. We have to give the IV fluid. Uh, depends on the patient urine output and also the patient uh condition. So what we should do because he already have passed in three point five liters of urine. So probably it might be the dehydration. We didn't give enough fluid. So we have to do the we have to do some fluid challenges. So the correct answer is you have to do normal CLI over two hours and then see how is urine output. Then after that, you continue to give the uh, IV fluid plan. Okay. Here, uh, this is a very busy slide. We don't need to do, know every uh, medication, but you make sure that you remember most of the nephrotoxic medication like NSAID. It is very, very uh, famous medication, uh, toxic to the kidney because NSAID can cause the pre-renal azotemia from the vasoconstriction of the uh, renal blood vessels and then also can cause the uh, ATN from the damage into the renal tubule and it just can cause the interstitial nephritis also or worsening of the, you know, Oh, proteinuria in the nephrotic syndrome. So it is really important. And another thing I want you to remember is that uh, aminoglycoside, gentamicin. Gentamicin is really, really toxic to the renal tubule. So when you have the acute kidney uh, injury patient, try to avoid the gentamicin. If you really need to give, need to give, depends on the renal function and need to adjust the dose, okay? And Another thing, you uh, our patient always came to the hospital with, they already on the ACI ARB and some of the um, uh, medication like metformin. So these medication at the stage of AKI, you need to hold off. And also when your patient is uh, acute kidney injury and already on the diuretic, and then you have to hold off this medication. And one more thing, especially in the uh, younger patient, uh, they sometimes have the acute kidney injury because they use the some of the uh, this is like, like the cocaine 
cocaine also causes the rhabdomyolysis or it can cause the renal infarct. And sometimes it is also associated with the anchor. Uh, also, cannabis, it can cause the acute tubular necrosis. So you need to ask these kinds of uh, uh, this medication when you see uh, take the history taken uh, if it is appropriate. So another question, I just want to check uh, the how do you remember in the, uh, the the one I mentioned in the uh, previous slide? Yes, sorry. So this is an SAID, as I have previously mentioned before. I'm, I'm not sure, I don't know, I cannot see the chat box again, maybe problem with you. my IT. No, I cannot see what you are choosing. Uh, I can have a look at the chat box. Yeah, thank uh, you. Unfortunately, you gave us the answer. I think that IT has given us the answer. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> It's all right. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Then uh, we have a lot of questions. Never mind. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. So, so we have to see how the risk factors for the acute kidney injury. So it depends on the patient, and it depends on their premorbidities and other conditions. And so for the patient, especially who are elderly patient, and they have the comor comorbidities such as diabetes, heart failure, and liver failure, and already have this chronic kidney disease, they are high risk of the acute kidney injury. And high risk medication that I mentioned in the previous slide. So when you ask the patient the uh, high risk medication, not only nephrotox medication, you have to ask all the regular medication because some of the regular medication need to hold off at the time of the acute, inju uh, acute kidney injury or need to adjust the dose. And make sure that you ask, is there any uh, use, uh, recent, any started new medication or not? And another thing is just the history, hypovolemia, hypotension, any contrast scan or any occult source of infection. So these are the risk factors of the acute kidney injury. So what are the signs and symptoms of the acute kidney injury? Mostly they come with the dehydration. So it uh, patient became thus and also uh, uh, dry mucous membrane and confusion, signs, symptoms of the uremia like nausea, vomiting, and reduced urine output change in the urine color. These are the signs and symptoms of the acute kidney injury. When the patient shows these signs, you have to catch up. You have to aware of these signs and symptoms when you do the wet round, you know. Then you can do the early intervention. So another important part, because when you investigate, when you do the investigation for the acute kidney injury, you don't need to do all the acute kidney injury workup. Depends on the history taking and it depends on their presentation and your physical examination finding, you have to do that appropriate investigation. So for the history, as I already mentioned, you have to make sure that it is a pre-renal or it is because of the uh, obstruction or you have to ask these things, these kinds of symptoms. And also you have to ask some, some of the systemic symptoms because intrinsic renal causes can, some of the intrinsic renal problem can present with the uh, systemic symptom like fever, Rashes, hemoptysis, and arthralgia. I just want to check with you all. Do you know why hemoptysis? We have to ask in the history. We have to ask about hemoptysis. Sorry, Joseph. Oh, could you help me to check in the chat box? I cannot see it. Yeah, got it. Uh, so far, no. Yeah, anti GBM, good pasture syndrome, SLE, good pasture. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so it. Because of the pulmonary renal syndrome, they can present with the hemoptysis, so alveolar hemorrhage with the glomerulonephritis. This is a combination. So this is important. For drug history, I will not repeat it again. Make sure you ask all the nephrotoxic medication, also regular medication, new medication. And sometime in the 
cancer patient, make sure that you ask about the malignancy history and the chemo, some of the chemotherapy can affect the kidney as well. Most importantly is urine upward history. You can ask the patient, they can tell you it is slowly reducing, it's oliguria or it's anuria. So you have to ask these, these, these are the important things. For the physical examination, we have to examine properly everything. However, I just want to make sure you assess the fluid status properly and document it properly. Especially for the volume status, you can see the skin tether. And also, if your patient can do a line scanning, you can do the line scanning blood pressure. It is a good one. And also, body weight. Body weight is important when you, uh, it is, in, you, they give you a lot of information for the patient fluid status. And you have to aware of the reflex sign, like fibula, rashes, any joint problem. Why we talk about fibula? Any idea? So once again, I'm looking at the chat box. Uh, vasculitis, vasculitis. Vasculitis, lots of vasculitis. Yeah, that's, you all already know. <laughs> so yes, you have the vasculitis and another thing is inosholin barbura. Or if you the, your patient came with came in with the acute kidney injury, uh, butterfly rash, it can be lupus. So these are the possibility. So what are the reflex signs? So as we mentioned in the previous slide, skin rash, it can be lupus or it's a palpable barbura, it can be hinocholin, vasculitis, or cryoglobulinemia. If your patient's very high blood pressure, if they have the uh, scleroderma, it can be scleroderma renal crisis. And hemoptysis, we already mentioned in the previous slide. Thromocytopenias are also important. It can be HUS, TTP, DINC. And when you do the urine dip, it shows the protein in the urine dip, we have to make sure that you, you proceed with the urine protein creatinine ratio because urine PCR is important prognosis indicator for the acute kidney injury. So evaluation. Evaluation is depends on your history taking and the physical examination. So if you think it's a pre-renal cause, if you think septic, you have to do a sepsis, you have to do all the septic screen and hypovolumia. Make sure you document everything, fluid status, intake output, body weight in your what round plan. Um, also, uh, if you think it's obstruction, have to do the bladder scan, then you can do the ultrasound. And another thing is, if you uh, see any uh, nephrotoxic medication, you have to stop it. If someone already stopped the antibiotic, make sure it is uh, depends on the renal function or not. So need to be renally adjusted. Urinary lysis, it gives you a lot, a lot of information. It is really, really important. I will show you next slide. Here. So urine microscopy, urinary lysis is really important. In that if you see the red blood uh, cells, it can be uh glomerular nephritis, or it can be um because of the malignant hypertension. If you see the white blood a uh, white cell. Maybe infection or maybe rejection or leukemia infiltration. And if you see the eosinophilia, maybe the AIN or thromboembolic diseases. Crystal urea, it can be because of the urea acid nephropathy or its cyclovir. Uh, granular cuts can be the acute jugular necrosis. So it will give you a lot of information. So another question. So 80 years old man referred by the GP to the ANE with the acute renal failure, with the tiredness, reduced urine output, and the serum creatinine is increasing uh, 110 to 250. So blood pressure is acceptable. On examination, you can see the femme <clears throat> mass probable, femme mass probable uh, uh, from the pub uh, pubis area. So so what do you think? So we then we proceed with ultrasound and you can see here yeah, there's a blood dystrophy, a blood out, uh, by the blood outlet of pressure. So ultrasound is important. Uh, 
when we uh, think it's the obstetric cause or you think it's the intrinsic renal cause causing the, you know, causing the acute kidney injury. Because in the intrinsic renal cause, we have to do the kidney biopsy. So we need to know how is the kidney condition. It's a small kidney and then any cyst. So this is the renal ultrasound. I will go through a little bit uh, first in the remaining slide because of the time. So here, uh, this is how the ultrasound showing the hydronephrosis. Okay, so I think uh okay we can go through this uh, question a little bit. So another uh question: thirty four years old man came into the RT uh, uh it was an RTA abdominal trauma and then presented to ED with a hypotension tachycardia, then hemodynamically uh initially unstable. Then uh you can see in the next few days he became. Everything stable, but progressively oligourate. You can see here, lactate level very high, and hemoglobin is dropped, maybe some bleeding. I put us in 5.6, and then we do the CT abdomen, which shows massive ascites and retroperitoneal hematoma. What will be the probable diagnosis? Sorry, can Joseph, can you kindly look at it? Yeah, I'm looking at it. Uh, so two two abdominal compartment syndrome, two two. Yeah, so we seem to be having consensus that it is two. Yeah, okay. lots of two coming through. That's correct. So uh, uh, abdominal compartment syndrome because of the intra-abdominal pressure increasing and intra-abdominal pressure, it can compromise the cardiac output. It can compromise. Everything, including the renal perfusion and causing the oligouric renal failure. So management of AKI, it depends on the etiology. So I won't repeat it again. So sepsis, toxins, blood pressure, and uh, another thing is make sure that you, you treat that complication. Okay, uh, fluid balance, really, really important. I won't repeat it again. Make sure, ask the uh, nursing team, uh, what do you weight in fluid balance, document properly. If you need to, uh, okay. So uh, for the fluid balance, if you have to give the, uh, optimize the blood pressure, you have to give, you can give the, uh, you can give the crystallize. And if the patient cannot eat and, uh, uh, drink well if you give the maintenance fluid, consider the gastrocilli. So this is the important things in the AKI. Make sure or uh, discontinue all nephrotoxic uh, medication. Aware of the volume stasis and perfusion pressure. Serial monitoring of the kidney function and the urine output as well. If the patient have the hyperkalemia, make sure the sample is not hemolyzed. Okay. And also, you can consider uh, alternative investigation instead of the radio contrast procedure, and then have to do the ultrasound, invisible kidney uh, kidney biopsy, and you make sure that we adjust the renal uh, or the medication need to be adjusted depends on the renal function, and need to refer to the renal team early if your patient may need the renal replacement therapy, and also consider the ICU admission. So these are the complications of AKI, ma mainly hyperkalemia, fluid overload, and then you remain encephalopathy and pericarditis. These are the important complications. And it is also important uh, for the indication for the dialysis as well. Sorry, I, I will be a bit first uh, for the rest of the slide. So these are the indication for the dialysis. It is, here is a refractive hyperkalemia. You give the management, but it's not really respond to the, your management. And so renal team need to be, uh, need to do that dialysis and fluid overload and metabolic acidosis. And make, if you have the uh, uremia like confusion, the seizure and the vomiting. So moreover, you have to make sure that when you, uh, uh, you need to refer to the nephrologist early, if the patient have the, if patient admitted with the, uh, AKI, especially in the transplant patient, because renal team need to be uh, 
adjust the medication dose and monitor the transplant function and probably they may need to do the transplant biopsy to make sure it's, there is no rejection, okay? So when we discharge the patient, make sure in your discharge letter, you mention all the uh, severity of the AKI, risk factor, what, med what is the kidney function before the discharge, and you have to write the proper plan, what medication uh, to consider restart back according to their according to their patient kidney function. Thank you so much for everyone. Sorry, um, my time is a little bit over. This is the acute kidney care plan that I talk in less few minutes. So, so from my slide, I just want you to remember that AKI is important early identification and appropriate management will prevent the mortality of the patient and then improving our patient outcome. Thank you so 